let's talk about the conformation of the diene in the Diels-Alder reaction. In particular, let's talk about their difference between the S-cis and the S-trans conformations. Now this S refers to the fact that we're talking about the conformation around this single or sigma bond, and you know that we have free rotation around these single bonds, so that we have an equilibrium between the S-cis and the S-trans conformation. S-cis being when both double bonds are pointed to the same side, or the cis conformation, and S-trans when the two double bonds are trans to one another. Now the Diels-Alder reaction will only work in one of these two conformations, the S-cis conformation. And if we don't have the S-cis conformation, we don't get a Diels-Alder reaction. These two are not equally populated at equilibrium. In particular, we have more of the S-trans at equilibrium which is bad for us if we want to do a Diels-Alder reaction. Now, it might be a little bit tricky to see why that is from this model, but if we look at the structure of these in three dimensions, what we can see is that these two hydrogens come very close to one another. And this steric clash between these two groups right here makes the S-cis higher in energy and less favorable than the S-trans. We can actually get this program to plot um, the energy of the S-cis and the S-trans along with all of the intermediate conformations. This will rotate the bond and calculate the energies and we get a plot that looks like this. And what we can see is that the actually the highest energy when is, is when these two double bonds are not conjugated. Um, the S-cis is higher in energy than the S-trans by about 10 kilojoules per mole. We can actually use these energy differences to figure out the ratio of the cis and the trans at equilibrium. And at 298K, so room temperature, we've got almost 50 times as much of the S-trans as the S-cis, which again is not good for a Diels-Alder reaction. We want the S-cis. If we raise the temperature, that ratio goes down to 18 to 1 which is why many times we run the Diels-Alder reaction at elevated temperatures. Now you know that this is not a good diene for a Diels-Alder reaction because our dienes usually have electron donating groups on them and this does not. So what happens to the S-cis to S-trans ratio if we put an electron donating group on this? For instance, I could put a methyl group in this position like this. How does this affect the s cis to s trans ratio. Well, let's look at the models. Well, if we just take the simple model as it's drawn over here and paste it into our 3D view, you can see that there's a lot of steric clash right here. The hydrogens on this methyl group are crashing right into the hydrogen coming off of this double bond. Now, we can minimize that structure a little bit to get rid of a little bit of that steric clash. When we do that, we stretch that bond a little. We open up the angle here a little bit. But you can see they're still fairly close to one another. That definitely makes the S-cis higher in energy in this case. Again, we can use those differences in energy to calculate the ratio at equilibrium. The ratio of S-cis to S-trans in this case is 1 to 80,000 definitely much less S-cis in this case because of that steric interaction between the methyl group and the hydrogen. Well, what if we move that methyl group from there to here so that instead of pointing in, it's pointing out. In this case, our electron withdrawing group, donating group, our methyl, is sticking out away from the other hydrogens in the molecule much less sterically crowded, much energetically more favored than the other case where the methyl was in here. If we look at the ratio of this S-cis to S-trans at equilibrium, we have a much better ratio, a 1 to 97 ratio in this case. So we would probably have enough S-cis in this case to do our Diels-Alder reaction, especially if we ran the reaction at elevated temperature. The last thing to mention is that there are some dienes because of their structure are locked in the S-cis conformation, like this one. You can see it here. And some are locked in the S-trans conformation because of their structure, like this one. And again, you can see that right here.